What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. A video on my experience, my negative experience with cocaine and why I think you should avoid it at all costs. Stay tuned for a great video with the new Matt Clark. So what's up, what's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Friday? I'm doing great, I got the day off, booked a vacation day. I uh, just really feel, felt like getting some extra rest. My brother's here for the weekend, I wanted to spend time with him. I wanna say thank you to each one of my 1,503 subscribers. You guys mean the world. The movement is real, the movement is growing, so if you could please hit that like button. And you can please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get these videos when they're new. And if you could share with someone on social media, help spread the message. That helps push the movement. More people that hear it, maybe something can change. Maybe not though, right? But at least I can help each and every one of you. If you want to hit me up, you can on Instagram. The new Matt Clark, all small letters, all one word. I look forward to hearing from you. I, can't, I won't always get back to you right away, but I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you. So today, we're going to speak on the negative cocaine addiction. Now, I'm a person that genuinely believes that there is no positive involved with cocaine addiction. I think if you can avoid it before you ever try it, just avoid it. There is no good in it, okay? Sure, in the, in the short term, it's fun. You can have it with your friends on a Friday, Saturday. The problem is some people are pre predisposed or whatever the word is to addiction and you just don't know until you try, right? And cocaine is a terrible drug if you're somebody who's susceptible to addiction because it gets you up here. See, heroin is different, right? Heroin is a physical addiction. A lot of the time the mental addiction wears off. Because of, you know, like when you wake up every day with the flu, it gets tiring, right? So eventually it's just the physical aspect that's keeping you tied to it. But cocaine, the next day you wake up, you feel fine. And sure, over months of use, eventually you're going to start waking up feeling like crap because your body's beat up and you're just beat up. But I'm telling you, man, that little motor in your brain starts going, 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 going. I mean, the only way I can explain cocaine addiction is to say it feels like your bones want to jump out of your skin. It feels like your legs want to just keep running. You ever seen a dog in a pool and you lift it out of the pool and its legs just keep going? That's what it feels like being addicted to cocaine. You just can't stop thinking about anything but making more money to buy more cocaine because the buzz is so short term. Like really, uh... You know, regardless how you're using it, whether you're smoking it, using it intravenously, or snorting it, it's horrible. It's like 10, 15 minutes of good, and then hours of sketch. And for some reason, in the, in the, in the present, while you're using it, it feels like something you want to do. But you always regret it. I've, I know very few people that enjoy the after effects of cocaine. You feel jumbled mentally. You feel uh, a little bit slower. And eventually, eventually, this incessant need to get more, to get more, builds up and builds up and builds up. So sure, when you first start using it, maybe you can get away with doing a half gram on a Friday and a half gram on a Saturday. But eventually you're going to be doing a gram on a Friday and then a gram on a Saturday. And then every once in a while on a Tuesday, you're going to go to a club or something with your friends after work and buy a gram there. And then eventually it snowballs and it's a life issue. I've seen cocaine destroy smart, intelligent people worse than any drug except crystal meth. Because crystal meth almost always destroys everybody who it touches on some level, you know. But cocaine induces paranoia and psychosis in some people and makes them pretty, almost unbearable to be around. I had a guy that I grew up with and I was living with this person just before I got arrested. 
obviously at the time I was using heroin and I was using cocaine and this person's mind was just destroyed by cocaine. He, it didn't matter. This guy would bang some heroin and if there was some coke even in the spoon that he didn't wash out of the spoon, that little tiny bit touching his vein, all of a sudden he's searching every pair of jeans, every waistband, every pocket, tearing the whole house apart. Even though he's a drug dealer and has a whole bag of cocaine in his pocket. It destroys people's mentals. I know a lot of people that are now dead because of cocaine. And it's sad. Now, a cocaine overdose is not pretty. Now, if you've never experienced a cocaine overdose and you're on cocaine or you use cocaine casually, think about this. Seizures, bleeding noses, and no fun. Okay? See, a lot of other overdoses, you just fall asleep basically or pass out and just basically die. Uh, and you would not go through any suffering. But with cocaine, that's not what it's like. It's a violent overdose. A lot of the time, blood shooting out of the nose and violent seizures. I've seen people fall and smack their faces off of things. It can be pretty dr dramatic and pretty rough to witness. Also, cocaine causes a lot of people's hearts to go boom. And that's not really what you want. A heart attack at a young age. Believe me, if you check the statistics, I guarantee you there's lots of people whose hearts have blown up at a young age because of cocaine. Cocaine is like living on a hamster wheel. And you're chasing something that's dangling in front of you, but you can't get to it. Because even though you have bags of cocaine, you still have this incense, incense need to search for more. It's like an insatiable hunger that you just can't feed enough. So no matter how much money you get, you're gonna need more and more and more. And eventually your whole life is gonna be enwrapped in cocaine. And that's not what you want. Uh, also, when it comes to cocaine use, I feel like it creates thieves, it creates liars, and it creates people who destroy friendships over the smallest amounts of drugs. I had a girl that I used to hang around with regularly. She was somebody who I knew almost all my life. Okay, we had a very good relationship. We, you know, were on and off dating casually, and we were really good friends even when we weren't dating. So it was a good relationship. And this person literally went into my apartment and took my t two last lines of cocaine and over that destroyed our friendship. Really? I've watched people do some pretty devastating and, and just de uh, uh, degrading things in order to get cocaine from dealers. And it's just a sad existence. So please, please, please avoid cocaine at all cost. I told a story about this. The, the only time that I have seen drugs since I have been home is a guy that was sitting in a bus shelter. It was like minus 20 or minus 25 degrees last winter time, sitting there on the ground with a handful of stone, a box of baking soda, smoking crack. And the guy was literally speaking gibberish. It was almost like he was mumbling in tongues. And it was a really, really sad thing to see. And he was screaming out about oppression and all these things, which I'm sure at some point he's probably faced in his life. And this is trauma and psychosis induced by this cocaine that he was smoking. Now he got on the bus and people were laughing at him and I felt horrible just sitting there and not doing anything. But what could I do? What could anybody do? To me, this person was too far gone. Mental health had taken over and I'm sure people had tried for years and years and years to stop this person from doing what he was doing but cocaine just reaches up and grabs you around your neck and takes a hold. Now, I will say this. If you break the cycle, if you're able to get away from it from a, for a substantial amount of time and stay away from it, it's one of the easier drugs to avoid thinking about, in my opinion. And maybe that's just because I never loved it. For me, a lot of the time, it was a replacement addiction or a 
uh, uh, complementary addiction. Because I never liked doing cocaine by itself. I always liked doing it when I was doing opiates. And for me, I always put my life at risk because of cocaine. Because anybody knows, mixing uh, opioids and cocaine is very, very, very dangerous. So, if you like this video and the information that I tell you in this video, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe and that bell notification button. And if you could share with somebody on social media, that would be great. That's the best way to help the channel. There's definitely a PayPal option if you would like to support, donate, help. Help donate and support the channel. And uh, it was really great talking to you guys. Now, I will say this. Cocaine is a fashionable thing, okay? Everybody thinks it's cool at 18, 19 to go out and hang out with their friends and blow a couple lines. And for most people, it doesn't get out of control. The problem is, until you get there, you won't know. Now, there's a boxer, a famous old boxer named Johnny Tapia. And he had the ability to be a world champion, which he was. But he could have been a world champion of real legendary status, maybe, had he not been taken by the cocaine devil. And one thing he said that stuck with me, and I hope sticks with you, is... You try it once, it's a mistake. You try it twice, it's a habit. Think about that. Cocaine is very bad and really can take over your life. So please, stay tuned for some more great videos at the new Matt Clark.